Gamescom is a gaming convention in Germany, and it's going on right now, as the date up here explains. It's August 21st to the 25th, as you know, at the date of this video being posted. It's the 23rd. It's been going on for a little bit now, and we're only just now getting visuals of what's going on with Ubisoft in here at Gamescom. You know, Gamescom isn't like some twisted, deranged place where they only engage in weird Ubisoft things. There's also other weird things going on at Gamescom, like a giant cat that looks down on you from a hole in the ceiling. That's there. That's there. But uh, if you're not distracted by the giant cat coming out of the ceiling, how about Ubisoft's Assassin's Creed Shadows Fortress? Okay? You remember when they were at the uh, Paris Expo, across the street from them, if you will, across the way, across the walking way, there was the Nintendo display. They had this big wall that was having all of this fun where people were playing the game up there and this giant wall and they were having these competitions, attracting a crowd, people cheering, great time. Well, folks that were sort of tuckered out from all that would walk over to the Assassin's Creed booth and sit down on their benches, which they could turn away from the Assassin's Creed display and watch the Nintendo show. <laughs> Whoops. Oops, uh, and the oopsie soft, right? Maybe we ought to call it that, oopsie soft, right? But uh, yeah, instead they've built uh, this time a European style castle in the middle of a convention center. Now, I just want you to take this in for a minute. Like, we're going to go ahead and take a look at another picture here, okay? Just a, you know, a little less menacing looking picture, but only just a little less menacing. Like, look at this enormous monstrosity, okay? Just. In the middle of a convention center, there's this bright red fortress that you just, you can't, you can't not see it when you're in Hall H. As soon as you walk into Hall H, I think that's where they're located here. As soon as you walk into Hall H, there's this bright glowing red brick staring you in the face, no matter where you are in that entire hall. And uh, you might notice there's a decoration out front there that they've treated as a decoration, of course, but it means a bit more than that. But we'll... We'll get another view of uh, Fortress Ubisoft here. Just, just look at how enormous this is. I'll direct your attention to the line of people down here, okay? Look at this. This is longer than a city bus, all right? Do you know how big a bus is? That's a Joe's Barbecue and Foot Massage joke, if you don't know. It's deep, deep, deep internet lore. Sorry for the sidetrack, but I just, I love that joke. Do you know how big a bus is? It's just... Feel free to look it up, okay? It's worth it. And believe me, the Joe's Barbecue Foot Massage video alone, at perfect internet, perfect, perfect internet. Uh, memory fun, stupidity, love it. But uh, the other videos that uh, Joe made, man, they're a lot better than whatever's up on the screen here at Fortress Ubisoft. Like, I, I can't stress how, like, insane this is. There's only one way in and one way out of it, by the way. Okay, that's that entrance right there with the Shinto gate, right? The Tori gate. The Tori gate, right? If you prefer the Japanese inflection. I believe I'm inflecting correctly. Let me know if I'm putting the Tori, right? I'm, it's uh, a hard O and then the kind of rolled R and then the two I's make an E. So it's a Tori gate, right? You hold it a little bit. I don't know. Correct me down below on the correct pronunciation. Obviously, we can't put links there. YouTube's futzy about that. But if you can spell out the pronunciation, usually I can figure it out. So just let me know how, where I'm getting it wrong. I'd like to learn because apparently this isn't going to go away. Uh, Ubisoft has not learned uh, any lessons from this because uh, check it out. We get an up close picture of it because someone else at the uh, convention center was likewise just as curious about this as we were. And so here's this. Now you might know that the Tory Gate that we are, Tory Gate if you prefer, is out there in uh, like mass media as bright red and like a singular log holding up everything. And this is more of a pagoda, right? This is more of a backyard decoration. Now, again, you might think that, oh, it's not red and, and it's, it's a little more pagoda-y than it is uh, a, a tori gate, a Shinto gate. But the problem is, is that a tori gate that's left unpainted is usually seen in like rural areas or smaller shrines. So it's still it's still holy. It's still meant to signify the departure from the ordinary, from the, mo the mortal, from the physical realm into the spiritual space. Now, you're not going in there and like busting ghosts and things like that. That's not how that works. It's moreover that this is a transcendent from a place where 
you know, you can cook and cook, kill food, that kind of thing. You can, you know, you can take care of your human business there. But over here on this side of the gate, none of that. You are meant to be divine or at least have divine thinking when you're in here. You're meant to pay homage to your ancestors. You're meant to pay homage to whoever you're here to, to say thank you to. And that's, you know, I think I've got it. Again, correct me down below if I've got it wrong, because sometimes these things blend together in the West. We have a tough time differentiating between um, Buddhist practices and uh, Shintoist practices. But I think I've got this right, that this this is ancestral. The The gateway they're presenting here is meant to go into an ancestral shrine where you thank uh, ancestors and communicate with them and ask for their guidance, that sort of thing. I, again, I'm outside. I'm not trying to assume anything, okay? I'm just trying to go off of what I've been able to get, you know, kind of cleared away with with the comments below that have talked about this with me. Because once again, this is a big problem. As it's been pointed out in the comments, we do have Japanese uh, commenters. So if you feel free, if you want to learn more about Japan, there's people in the comments that are letting us know. Feel free to interact with them. Great people. They pointed us in a lot of different directions here at Bounding Into Comics in order to cover this appropriately and really grasp the kind of cultural, I don't know, assault that Ubisoft, almost said Ubisoft. Whoops. Now the video is going to get demonetized for sure. Absolutely. Oh, well, I'm going to be in trouble. <laughs> anyway, back to the serious of this, okay? So Ubisoft has made a mistake again. What I want to point out is that traditionally, now this isn't something you're going to get kicked in the face for. This isn't some grand assault. But it, it is considered somewhat disrespectful to walk under the gate, to walk through, you know, walk through the gate as though it is a doorway to you, as this is more like, a, uh, it's considered a pathway for, uh, I wouldn't say gods, because the Japanese don't, don't have gods in the way that like the Greeks and European uh, faiths did. Uh, you know, and of course the monotheistic God can't like apply here. It's a little different again. So this is more of a, it's a, it's the, the important deities, if you will, travel through here. And again, I'm not trying to minimize it. I just don't want to confuse people's idea of what the point of respecting the middle of the gate is. Why ordinary folk that are not monk or, or not like priest or priestess, you know, they're just, they're not caretakers, just regular citizens, regular uh, parishioners, if you will, people who come in and, and observe the traditions within the shrine, you know, they go on the sides. They do not go through the middle as what Ubisoft has said you have to do in order to get in here. And I'll point out, this is it. You don't leave through a different space. You got to go in through this hole and you got to come out through this hole. The rest of it is sealed up shut. Like how crazy, can we just stop and like, how crazy is that to begin with? Avoiding all of this mess where, like, I guarantee you, there are not people bowing as they walk in and there are not people bowing as they leave. So, again, they're even making even more of a mockery of the Tory gates. And this is, again, why? What's the point of this? Why do you need this entrance? What is the problem with building, like, the, the shingle, the, the overlaid shingles uh, doorways that were on the, on the castles themselves? Why not build a castle wall? Uh, like a traditional Japanese castle wall as the entrance and have the doorways, you know, open at certain intervals when the showing's beginning and end. Because what you, you're about to see is the interior of this, what they wasted all of this on. But man, it's crazy. It is absolutely crazy to think that these people have built a fortress. Like that, like this, this is nuts. This is absolutely nuts to go into any space and almost ceiling to floor build a wall in the middle. Like, yeah, screw you guys if you're on the other side of Ubisoft. If you're downwind of the Assassin's Creed fortress, good luck being seen by anybody coming through the door. Like, oh, I thought there was, uh, I thought there was a wacky racers. I don't know. I thought there was a Qbert display here. Yeah, it takes you back, huh? Before I was born. But I thought there was a Qbert display out here. Oh, geez, you know, uh, I don't know, man. I can't see it because the Assassin's Creed brick is in the way. How did they get away with that? Like, I guarantee you going forward, somebody's going to like put up a fuss and be like, that's no way. We're not allowing another <laughs> castle to be erected in the middle of a, of a, of a uh, convention floor. This is ridiculous. This is insane. But what you might be asking yourself, like, why did they need all that space? What is going on in there? 
Well, you know, they've got some neat things for you to look at on the inside. Here's a few shots from the outside, but also you'll notice up in the top left-hand corner here, here's the top of a roof. And as I mentioned before, it is the overlaid shingles, the, um, the very, I'm going to assume that that's period, but again, I am not expert in this, like the people they hired for the game, okay? This could very well be Chinese architecture because they, again, continue to confuse the two. Could be Korean architecture as well because, again, they confuse those as well. And who knows? This could be completely made up. Some, some guy in Blender could have done this and they printed it out with a large media 3D printer and that's what they got. I'll note, too, uh, this doesn't look too wheelchair friendly. I'm not sure uh, how you're supposed to get your wheelchair up on that. You remember the one in France had that handicap placard out front to let everybody know that this was a place you could come into if you were wheelchair bound or otherwise unable to walk. And now over here, they're like, uh, you're going to have to have uh, full lateral control of your body in order to take a picture here. I don't know, man. Seems a little seems a little strange. Like this company can't seem to make up its mind on how it wants to talk. But also, you may have noticed in the time I've been talking, all the way down here at the bottom, way down here in the left hand, the bottom. Let's take a look at the oh, whoa. What was their thinking, right? If we put it behind glass, it'll look more important, right? They won't know. It's behind glass, so it's important, you see. And so that's what they did. They got these big glass cases, and they decided to stick fans inside of there fans made out of the same plastic fly swatters at the dollar store or the dollar plus store now and uh and then just some postcards of uh of the game's advertising art that we've seen for close to four years now so some of the advertising art anyway and that you know you got the you got the collector's edition display right there but this is what the, this is all they could come up with was like hey you know we'll just Whatever, you know, we don't need to put uh, Zorro's sword out on display. We'll just put some fly swatter level fans in there with some stickles up on top, some stickles. It's Ubisoft, everybody. What do you think? They're just a tiny indie company. They're just a very tiny indie company. They, they don't have any, any pull or sway, and they certainly can't put on a giant menacing red screen inside of their castle. That would be ridiculous, and silly, and strange, right? Well, you know, never mind. It would appear that uh, they're okay with that because this is what it is. As soon as you go in here, you're bathed in like blazing red light, and then you're like assaulted by a TV screen that is displaying, or several screens, it appears, that is displaying the Assassin's Creed uh, footage you're meant to see here during the presentation. And uh, it is quite literally just an assault on your senses as you come in. Just a complete black void and bright red light. Now, if you don't know, for human beings, when, when red is like the dominant light source that we're faced with, shadows become very interesting to try and determine the depth of. Now, that sounds neat and fun for your Assassin's Creed Shadows game, right? But the problem is, is that people walking around in the dark bathed in bright red light to the point where they can't tell the depth of a shadow. Well, they might get a little whoopsie, you know, and when you come out of that bright red light and into regular, you know, um, uh, blue light that we deal with out here in our regular reality, uh, regular spaces that aren't tampered with with this bright red stuff. Everything looks a little blue for a minute, little little green, blue, and then you're back to normal. It's like, ah, you know. And there's some people who are pretty photosensitive when it comes to that stuff. So this, again, like they're, they're completely going for like this whole, you won't be able to look at anything else but what we want to show you. If you want to interact with Assassin's Creed, you're going to come inside and focus totally on it. We're not going to tolerate you looking at anything else. And then the people next door were like, haha, we're going to shoot some stuff up on the ceiling that's intensely distracting so that everybody next door will have something to look at. I love it. The other thing I want to call your attention to is down here, there is a step sign, as you can see. Down here, there's a teeny tiny little green sign that says there's a step there. So again, they had to lift everything up in order to run all the wiring through for electronics and the screens and stuff like that. And you don't need hundreds of people tripping over that a day. I get it. But I do want to point out intense red light returning to regular, you know, blue light. Bang. You're, 
that's that's you're stepping down into like a, a hazard pay situation where you know you've got people that their knees are bending backwards because they stepped wrong you've done that before right misjudged a step and your knee bent backwards the wrong way oof you know the roblox oof noise right it stings but again you know you might be wondering it's an awfully big space what's going on up there on the front with all those uh paper dividers well, it, uh, it's where they're going to present from. It's where people are going to talk. They're going to say things, uh, important things, I hope. And uh, it looks like what this is, is that they're going to have like the devs up there or the German speaking dev team or a team that's going to translate the German uh, up there to talk about things and or a rotating cast of staff that do that. And so, you know, cool, neat. Of course, they have a riser in order to get them above, just above the crowd so that if you're like videotaping or, you know, just looking on, you can see everybody. You're not, you know, overcasted by the folks in the front. And it's okay. It's fine. It's not a big issue. But again, that blazing red light is just something else, man. Absolutely something else. And again, like we're going to take a look here, uh, that, that intense red light again, this hugely uh, painful red light. And I guess that's not a screen. That's just a printout. So you just go in there and you listen to people talk and you look at the screen and that's it. There's not even a screen. It's just a big old banner. I gave them more credit. I thought when I was looking at this earlier, getting stuff ready for the video here, I was thinking to myself like, whoa, they got a big screen in here. That must be a lot of, nope, it's not. It's just a big old banner. Probably got it printed up at Staples or whatever the equivalent is in Germany. The FedEx kiosk. You know, but, you know, sensing that this might feel a little off to people, they made a space for the, I presume, anybody who wanted to uh, uh, speak at this space or something like that, so presenters. They had a, a backstage area here, very comfortable space that uh, people could hang out with. Of course, they have the, the feng shui couch here and the, the gong for sale from Amazon. And, yeah, you know, you recognize that down there, right? That gong? You recognize that? Let's get closer. You see that gong right there? How about that? That looks kind of fun, interesting. It's nice of them to put up a gong, because you know the Japanese and their gongs, right? Just, you can't go anywhere in Japan without some Japanese guy banging on a gong, right? Just the Japanese and gongs. They go together like Americans and cheeseburgers, Britons and uh, tea, and the Germans and... Uh, Beer. That's what I meant. Beer. But wouldn't you know, over on Amazon, it's uh, it's on sale. That's right. I took a screenshot just in case the sale expired before we got the video up. So here it is. Uh, the gong that you saw in this previous picture right here, that gong. Uh, yeah, it's right here for 59 US dollars, right? And that's on sale, 13% off. Congratulations, guys. Got a deal on that. But again, it's just a regular old Chinese-made gong, plastic wood kind of looking thing. It says it's pounded, uh, hand-hammered bronze, but uh, I don't know about that one. That seems uh, a little unlikely, but uh, who knows? Who knows? But you might be wondering, too, like, oh, there was that fancy lamp there. Man, that must have cost a lot of money. That That's kind of neat. Just to have hanging out there on the uh, Walmart changing room floor backstage space, I guess. So yeah, uh, that ended up being 69 euros. And if you're an American like me and don't know what that means, that's roughly $77, okay? So this is where they, they spend their money. They, they spend their money on this cheap stuff, these Etsy custom print uh, throw pillows that are one and done use. And uh, that's what they spend all the money on. Instead of making a game that's tolerable with a narrative that doesn't insult an entire culture, right? They buy this stuff. They buy this stuff. And I guarantee you that's not a fake uh, piece of furniture there that those things are setting on. That's probably real. I couldn't figure out what it was. So that's probably somebody's private collection that that came from or a really neat yard sale find. Who knows? These people are kind of weird with how they decorate. They just kind of assume all the Asian people are the same, you know? And so they just stick everything together at once and hope for the best, I guess, you know? Kind of like how we saw them with the Tory gates, just tossing that out in front and asking people to commit blasphemy by walking through the gate like they're a god. The assertion that they're telling you with this, by the way, that's the thing that blows my mind. We'll jump back over here and take a look at it. The assertion that they're making here 
is that the convention floor is the mortal space. And when you enter their little, I don't know, or it's not little, that's for sure, their fortress, when you enter their fortress, this is a spiritual space. This is a holy space. Their video game is holy. Okay, and then they bring you in there and you're just meant to sit under this bright red light as you stare up at this thing, this unmoving, unflinching giant banner that has uh, Japanese writing on it in a culture that does not speak Japanese. Or moreover, the majority of people sitting in this space most likely do not read kanji and thus have no idea what that says. I don't know what it says. That could say, eat at Joe's, uh, left turn here. You know, that, who knows? Who knows what that says? But they did go out and spend some money understanding that all of this might be a little off-putting to people. And so they went out and they hunted down Stephanie uh, Joston. I think I said that right. Joe Osten. Joe Osten. Let me know if I got that wrong. But I think that's how you say her name. She is the voice actress and model for Quiet in the Metal Gear Solid games, particularly the Metal Gear uh, Solid Phantom Pain one. The one with the cigar and the singing. Yeah. Well, they're singing in every one, but particularly the cigar one. And so there she is sitting in the in the hall. And she's, of course, carrying the uh, Ubisoft uh, mascot currently for the um, Ubisoft Star Wars Outlaw game. Outlaws, plural, even though you're only playing as one character. Anyway, uh, she's carrying that character around. His name is Nyx, you know. Um, totally not Porg bait. Remember Porgs? Tell me that's not a porg by any other name, right? Anyway, she's carrying that around. You can just tell how intensely red it is. Like, it's reflecting onto my face how red it is in that space. I just wanted to stress to you, like, some of these pictures had some toned-down colors, but this is what it's like being in there. Look at her. Just, just like, total rave, blast-out red color there, man. Just out, out of the way. And so she's saying, of course, thank you at Ubisoft. For, then impre for this impressive presentation. Assassin's Creed Shadows looks amazing. Series of emojis. P.S. I think Nyx enjoyed the show too, the stuffed animal. So I don't know if they paid her for this. I don't. I, I want to guess that because they've paid off YouTube influencers. I can't imagine people who work in the industry being off limits. That would be a little backwards. But there again, she might just be a fan of Assassin's Creed and think this is cool. I have no idea. But it seems sus that she's walking around with this Nyx doll everywhere she goes. And this, by the way, this is the picture that she took of the interior. So as you're, as you're in here, this, there's these decorations up on the wall. Remember, you're transcending from the mortal realm into the spiritual realm. And here is Yasuke on one side of the, uh, the paper wall there being seen through. This is, this is where that uh, shadow boxing, shadow battle sort of stuff came from. Uh, I remember it being used in like the Ninja cartoons and uh, Power Rangers Ninja Storm. That's where I remember it being used, but it's been used a lot in um, Japanese cinema for like uh, choreographed kind of dynamic fights that are set up in shadow silhouettes only. So it's not that unusual to have a character standing in solid silhouette in inside of like a paper window, paper wall, paper doorway situation. And I assume Naoi is on the other side of that. But I just, it's such a bizarre choice, you know, to have like so many solid, unmoving things in an era where, and then build this huge castle just to fill it up with a bunch of stuff that doesn't move. Isn't that weird? I think that's weird to just build your own private space in the middle of a convention center and then populate it with a bunch of stuff that doesn't keep anybody's attention. I'm not sure what the goal was having people come in here to where they can see all this stuff showcased and then walk into this um i don't know it reminds me of that 1984 commercial where uh macintosh commercial where like people were assembled in there uh in this this like auditorium and then this person ran in this woman ran in with a sledgehammer and threw it through the, the screen i mean obviously it's not a screen it's some cheap print from staples but you know i assume it's not cheap though it's a pretty large thing so it probably cost them like i don't know hundred bucks, you know, something like that. So it's not like chump change, but you know what I mean? It's pretty expensive to probably have made keep uh, unreached, you know, coming in. But there again, I don't know. It's, they built a castle in the middle of a convention center and then bathed the interior in bright red stripper lights. 
I have no idea what the goal is here, guys. I, I just, I can't fathom what they're trying to convey with, with all of this, other than they want you to not pay attention to the game and instead pay attention to the people talking. And for the life of me, I don't know why, because you're supposed to pay attention to the game. What are you doing talking about this? It comes out in November. You guys should be doing everything. Paying cosplayers. That's what you should be doing. You should be paying cosplayers to come through and be performing in here. There should be a guy walking around the convention in Yasuke armor. I don't care if he works for you, but there should be a guy walking around in Yasuke armor. You should have a now way out there. You should ask for permission to get on top of some warehouse locally. Have your, have your cosplay actor get on top of a warehouse and pretend that Naue and Yasuke are taking over uh, Cologne. I think this is Cologne. Kalagni? I don't know. I'm not German. I think it's Cologne, though. I think this is where this is happening. So just have them. Yeah, don't climb up on a church. That's weird. Don't get on top of the convention center. Everybody's going to want to. There'd be a line back there like that funny meme of Batman uh, brooding on top of the gargoyle and then all the superheroes are behind him with a ticket number, you know? You don't want to do that. You go out and find like a, some blasted out um, industrial park. I, I can't imagine that Cologne is this perfectly clean place that has absolutely no low rent industrial park that somebody wouldn't take a, you know, a couple hundred dollars to let you guys goof around for a couple hours up on the roof, provided nobody took like this, the, uh, the leap of faith you know, <laughs> into a Volkswagen at the bottom, you know? And, uh, but that's, that, that's what you guys could have done. You could have made a full presentation of that. You could have made a full presentation of those people in those costumes walking around Cologne, going to the different shops and people taking pictures with them and just showcasing the characters existing in this space and just, you know, advertising it in the sense of like, look, people are excited to interact with these characters. Let's talk about them. Nope. Have you guys seen a barrel? Look at that barrel. That's a neat barrel, isn't it? That's a neat pillow. That's a, that's a really neat static picture. And oh, look, there's a stuffy animal. That's if, you can, if you're not like photosensitive and you're like completely blown out by all this bright red light and have a horrible headache. I don't know. I'm not in charge of this stuff. If I was, like I told you, that's how things would be going. We'd be showing off these characters storming cologne you know taking over you know showing them at the karaoke bars showing them hanging out with people posing with teenagers and stuff not kids because the game's not meant for kids but you know teenagers and stuff like that get them around with anime characters posing pictures with anime characters treat them like cosplayers do these whole like ensemble things get up and make the make yasuke do the um uh, Capcom versus Marvel fist to fist thing that Cyclops and Ryu do, where they clasp their their hands together thing. Have Yasuke do that with all the all the uh, anime characters he's running into. If you're hearing fireworks, my neighbors like setting those off during the day. I don't know why, but you know, I don't know why Assassin's Creed Ubisoft is doing this at Gamescom, building these giant fortresses. There's a lot of things in the world I don't know, you know. <laughs> But that's what the popping's coming from. There's not an assault on my home. My neighbor's just like setting off fireworks. I live in a place in the world you could just do that, you know? Unlike these people, like Cologne, again, you would be going around showing off what's happening in this space while you're there. You know, you show Yasuke and Naoi sitting and waiting for the subway to come along, waiting, waiting for the metro, whatever you call it over there, the underground, you know? Hanging out, Yasuke reading a German newspaper. That would be hilarious. You have Nasuke, Yasuke, Sid Nasuke. <laughs> you have Yasuke, Nasuke, right? Nasuke. <laughs> you have Yasuke sitting on a bench there, and he's just reading a newspaper while the train goes by, and he looks at, you know, he's got like a really like comedically large watch on, and he looks at the watch, and then he puts a newspaper up, and you can have now Wei just stand up from behind the bench and tap him on the shoulder. And it's cute. It's a neat thing, and you're interacting with the city that you're supposedly throwing this con on. Nope. 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 Instead, we're just going to bathe everybody in red light and stick a Tory gate out front and make sure everybody knows that these fancy fans are available. They're so fancy, right? They're so fancy. This just blows my mind, guys. Let me know how you feel down in the comments section below. What are you thinking about this castle? In the, it's a European style castle, too. Isn't that weird? I think that's even weirder that it's, it's, you know, it's set up to have the, uh, the four. Uh, observation towers up there at the top, like a, you know, like a cartoony style castle, very European in its approach. <laughs> Let me know what you think down below about all this. And as always, guys, good luck out there.